Hey hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we continue our tour of start collecting the minor states of the Napoleonic Wars. Now this is one that we don't see that often but when we do see it it is definitely a fan favourite. Today we are looking at start collecting the Kingdom of Saxony. Now there are three main periods that these guys rocked during the Napoleonic period which I have very creatively called the early, middle, and late. I mean, <laughs> never let it be said that there's a, there's a beauty in simplicity, I like to think. And the early uniform was the one that was worn until 1809, with some sources saying that they, uh, they wore it a little bit later than that as well. Uh, this one was very flamboyant. It was almost like a Seven Years' War Prussian uniform, very similar to the uh, the Prussians in 1806, who they were sort of voluntold that they were going to be fighting alongside in that campaign. Then they switched to a French-style uniform for most of the rest of the war, adapting to the... Uh, well, sorry, yeah, so they had the French uniform for the rest of the war, and when the French changed to the Bardin uniform in 1812, the Saxons changed theirs to be uh, similar to the French as well. And it's that late Bardin era uniform that we're going to be focusing on here, mainly because we're going to be using a lot of French miniatures to represent the Saxons. That's one of the great things about these minor German states. Because you can use the French figures to represent them, it means that there's quite a lot of cheap options out there for collecting your army. Now, the Saxons reorganized their army into organizations that were a little, not quite the same as the French, a little bit different. We'll get into those as we start collecting because it is going to affect the number of packs and how we break them up. So let's get into some specifics. Those of you who have not seen any of these videos before, we have some ground rules. It is currently, although I have a feeling that I might need to up these amounts in the future, but we are currently going with the classic £200 to spend. And this £200 is divided into two £100 chunks. It can either be like birthday money and Christmas money, or two different pay packets, or from two different bonuses, something like that. The idea here is that in the first month, we spend the first £100 to get the core of the army, and then the second uh, that we can play games with, and the second £100, that's where we had the extra flavour, and the extra fun stuff. Now, I'll be quoting RRP on all of these things that are taken directly from the manufacturer's website. But please remember there are third-party retailers out there, such as the Outpost, with which I am an affiliate. There's a link to those guys down below. And they sell what's usually the plastic set at a discount, 10, sometimes even 20% off the RRP. So definitely check them out if this inspires you to get a Saxon army or maybe any other kind of army. And that includes 40k fantasy, Flames of War, all that, all that good stuff. Now, I won't be adding postage because that varies between where you live. And something that's increasingly more common with these companies is that they do free shipping if you hit over a certain amount. General Dan and I will often message each other to say, I'm putting in an order with the Perrys this month, do you want anything? Or I'm ordering from Brigade Games in their November Bonanzas, do you want anything? So, you know, because these companies can offer free shipping or because you can get them perhaps cheaper elsewhere, I don't include postage and packaging. Something else I don't include are things like paints, brushes, glues etc etc because i assume that not many people get into napoleonic wargaming cold not many people just walking off the street to an element games or an outpost or uh, warlord games and say you know what i want to collect all the armies for the battle of waterloo or something like that i think most players come from fantasy or 40k war machine whatever the cool kids play these days bolt action i suppose and so they've already got paints and glues and things like that and there's a lot of different manufacturers out there and there's a lot of different preferences. My brother, he's a much better painter than me. He uses Vallejo paint. I prefer Games Workshop paint. So I'm not including stuff like that. Although I am thinking I might do a getting started, getting started video. So let me know if that's something that you think would appeal. Now, finally, in this prologue, we're going to discuss unit sizes. In this series, we have had a medium infantry unit consists of 24 models. With obviously large and small being either side of that probably 30 or 18 respectively we have a cavalry unit that is eight models and an artillery battery slightly flexible it can either be one gun or two guns we prefer two guns but we'll make do with one finally we will 
not be buying the glues as i said but i will be looking at bases and flags where appropriate now i'm gonna look base the army on a historical formation with a twist i always think that's the best way of doing things is to find yourself an order of battle for a battle you're interested in or a campaign or a year something like that and then start collecting around that but add the stuff that you want to make the army yours and i'm looking at the saxon army of 1813 the seventh corps specifically that was their formation and the 24th division was made up of saxons under the absolutely amazingly named general lecoq now i could not have not have general lecoq as, as my commander so there you go that's uh, that's said that's why so that's this video demonetized but um what, what what i really what i really like about this division is the name of the commander but also and more seriously this is an achievable hobby project so you can collect the entire division not too difficultly in fact you could even say well i'm primar primarily a french player but i want to do something a little bit different so i'm going to go with the saxons you could you, you could have this army as a complete side piece we can see that it contains 10 battalions two batteries of artillery and an extra company of jaegers of those 10 battalions they are further divided into two light infantry battalions six line battalions a combined grenadier unit and some grenadier uh, some guard grenadiers with our first 100 pounds we are going to punish ourselves we're going to get the pain out of the way nice nearly and we're going to smash out the infantry now there are companies out there that do make specific saxon minis i'm thinking of black hussar and possibly eagle miniatures maybe don't uh, don't don't 100 quote me out that one uh, but they're all metal now because the saxon troops in the 1812 period war uniforms are the same as the french as i said earlier on we are going to buy french models and paint them up in their different colored uniforms to portray the saxons therefore heading up old faithful we're gonna head on over to the perrys and drop 90 pounds on d11 which is the french brigade deal now that gives us four boxes of perry 1812 to 15 infantry as well as a pack of mounted colonels and a cannon those of you who've seen a few of my videos before will not be surprised that this is where i start the um this is where i start the recommendations as i said earlier on the saxons had a slightly different unit organization to the french and a saxon battalion contained four companies and each company had 180 officers and men on, at least on paper anyway so we can just split our battalions into four companies of six figures now that's really handy because the perry french battalions are designed to be 36 man units and because of that you get uh, 21 line troops three as a command and then you get 12 figures to make the flank company six grenadiers six leger so what we can do is we can strip those light company those elite companies out that gives us 21 line figures and three command which gives us our units of 24 models having four boxes that gives us four battalions of 24 models straight out the gate nice and easy because the Perrys have half of their models in great coats and half in dress uniform, then you can also divide those quite nicely as well, giving you uh, two full battalions in dress uniform, two full battalions in their great coats. But, Tim, I hear you cry. We have all of those elite company figures left over, and there's, there's not a small amount of them. We've got 48 of them. And this is where our force organization comes to the rescue, our order of battle. We saw that they had one unit of combined grenadiers so i would suggest that we take 24 of our elite company models we only really need 21 but we'll take 24 and we'll make a combined grenadier battalion out of those guys lovely stuff now we've got 24 figures left over now i would recommend that the models we used for the grenadiers were the ones in great coats as i mentioned earlier on half of them are in great coats half of them in dress uniform and the reason why is because we're going to take those 24 models we're going to divide them into two lots of 12 these are the remaining ones that we've not used for the grenadiers we've got two small units of 12 there 
what we're going to do is we're going to take all the skirmish models that also come in these boxes. Each box comes with six skirmishes. So we've got 24 skirmishes as well out of those four boxes. A bit, a bit of maths on the fly there. So what we do is we have 12 guys formed up. And then we have 12 guys in skirmish formation for each of those two battalions. So basically what we've ended up with is four close order infantry battalions of line. One combined grenadier battalion, and then two mixed order formation battalions of light infantry. With those seven battalions, we now have 70% of the Saxon army, and that's just for our first purchase. We've not even got to 100 pounds yet. I think that's something of a win. Now, we've also got a few extras as well. We've got a pack of mounted colonels. Now, what I would suggest is I would put one of those colonels in with the combined grenadiers. Because the combined grenadiers wouldn't necessarily carry a flag, having that mounted officer, A, just shows that they're not uh, just a rabble of dudes. And secondly, it gives you a focal point for the units as well. In the black powder rules, you are supposed to measure from the standard bearer, I believe it is, in the units. It might be the commanding officer. If, it's, if it is a standard bearer, then you can use a commanding officer instead. And if it's a commanding officer, at least him being mounted lets him pop out a little bit. The other two, I'd put to one side for now. We've got £10... Oh, sorry, we've also got the cannon as well. And with that, now you do get bases in with the Perry's infantry set. But I'm going to recommend that we head over to war bases anyway and get some more. So I'm going to suggest we've got £10 left over. So I'm going to suggest that we get a pack of 50mm round bases. Those are for our commanders. And some 75mm by 100 square base, well rectangular bases I guess, for the artillery. I'm also going to suggest that we buy a pack of 45mm by 40 bases as well. Now normally I have 20mm frontages for my units. So that is if you do a measure across the front of the unit, if you've got 12 models, then the width of the unit would be 240 millimeters because you've got 20 millimeters per man but the bases that come with the perries give you 15 millimeters per man which makes them look a lot more bunched together which it, which does have quite a nice effect I'm, I'm, I'm neither here or there on there but I'm going to recommend that we get some of those 45 by 40 mil bases and we'll use those next month but at the moment that's three packs at £1.75 each Takes us to three fifty for five pound twenty five, taking us to a grand total for this month so far of ninety five twenty five, and I think to be honest, we're probably going to call it a day for month one. There, don't worry, we, we've not lost that four pound seventy five. We're going to add that to next month's budget because I think we're probably going to need it. But that is it for the end of month one. Now we have got a lot of troops here. We've got uh, the best part of two brigades of infantry. We've got the entire sec second brigade, two battalions each from the Friedrich and Steendl infantry regiments and the combined grenadiers, led by our mounted General Melantin. We also have both battalions of the first Saxon light infantry in the first brigade, just needing two more line battalions plus the guard, as well as the Jaegers, to completely finish that formation off if we want to go down that route. It's not quite the trifecta I like to have of cavalry, infantry and artillery, but it's enough to be getting us started along. In month one, we've got plenty of infantry we can be getting on with, and you know that is a viable army that you could put on the tabletop. So we're going to head into month two. Now, I'm going to state here that there are a number of different ways we can go here. I'm going to suggest a couple of different ideas, but I'll let you decide which one you prefer, which one most appeals to you. The first option we're going to look at is to finish the historical brigade, and then if we've got any money left over, then we can use that on fun stuff later. The second one is a bit of a halfway house, a couple more units just to push closer towards that historical example, and then more fun stuff. And then the final one is just crazy. We've got enough infantry Let's just go wild with the support. So we're going to look at the first option. Now, we still are missing the Guard, two battalions of infantry, and the Jaegers. So we're going to head over to the Perrys once again. But this time, we will be hitting up their Meta Rangers. That's, that's just me giving you a bit of a metal riff there. 
And that's because although buying 24 metal models is £12 more expensive than buying a box of 36 plastics, we're not really going to need all of those plastics anyway. We're not going to need the elite companies. So we'll be wasting money a little bit on the plastics anyway. And it's just something a little bit different. But if you wanted to save money, then absolutely go for a plastic set. Now, I'm a huge fan of the Perrys when they do models that are different to the norm. So I'm going to recommend the Standing at E set. I'm going to suggest two packs of FN80 and six packs of FN81 for a total of £64. So that's two commands and uh, six just regular troopers. Now, as I say, this is something of a luxury, and I'm only suggesting this uh, in this option because, you know, if we're going down the historically accurate route, we're going to save money elsewhere, but it does severely cut into our budget. So you could very easily get the plastics instead. Additionally, we are need to acquire some Jaegers, and I recommend that we stick with Perry's and go for NN13 Volunteer Jaeger Company Skirmishing. Now, these are actually part of the Nassau range, and while the uniforms are not identical to the Saxons, I think they're close enough for government work. I think you can get away with using them as the Saxon Jaegers. Now, one thing that I would suggest if you're going to do that is cut the tuft off the, uh, the ball that's on the front of the Shaco. As the Saxons didn't have the big tufts, they just had the uh, the ball on the front. I always think of them like snooker balls. Alternatively, you could head over to Calpe Miniatures. That's right, uh, Richie. You could head over to Calpe Miniatures and pick up S60 Saxon Jaeger Company. Now, the uh, Perry's version is £8. The Calpe Miniatures one is €10. Euros. So I'm, I'm just I'm going to say €10 Euros is the same as £8. Whichever one you go for. That's going to take us to £72. Now, all that's left to get to complete the historical formation are the Guard Grenadiers. Now, you could stick with Calpe. You could even possibly get away with using Perry or Victrix Old Guard here. But for me, if you're collecting the Saxons, if you splash out on one, well, actually, on two units... We'll get to the other one later. Then the other one that you should splash out on are heading over to Black Hazar and buying their Saxon Grenadiers. They are phenomenal models. I would suggest three packs of Guard Grenadiers and one pack of Guard Grenadier Command. And that costs us €36.75 or around about £30. Now, this does take us over the £100 mark for this month. It takes us to £102. But... Don't forget, we saved £4.75 from last month. And while I should say, that weirdly, this only gives us 21 figures for the guard because they come in packs of six and then the command come in packs of three, then we can probably spread them out or we can do something with them anyway. That would mean that we can probably get it into the same footprint as a 24-man unit. Or, failing that, just have... An 80-man unit, uh, you know, just have it as either a small, um, yeah, a small unit, or just say, well, because they're the guard, they count as a medium unit. I can't imagine your opponent being too upset with you uh, having a slightly smaller unit of guard. So that's it. We've got the full division. All ten units are here, but we're a little bit short on divisional command. We've got no one to represent General Lecoq, and <laughs> I am so childish. And crucially, we've got no flags for the army. Now that is a big problem, I think. And realistically, we could have gone for plastics instead of the metals for the remaining two line regiments, or battalions, sorry, and that would have freed up twenty-four pounds for flags, which is you know enough to get all the flags that we need. That will keep the budget sub 200, then, and if that's what you want to do, I would say absolutely go for that. There are various sources for flags, but GMB are my go-to. They do a sheet of two flags, which you could do for the 1st Battalion and 2nd Battalion for £3.90, which is not necessarily particularly cheap, but it's not bad. You can get six lots of those for your army, which will give you enough for 12 regiments, or sorry, sorry 12 battalions, and we haven't got that many, so you may even have some money left over. Now, regular viewers will know that I do enjoy a two-gun battery, and we've only got one gun battery in this, but you know what? That's not necessarily the end of the world. What we've got are ten battalions of infantry, a company of Jaeger, a, a, a tiny company of Jaeger, 
a single gun battery and both brigade commanders so that is not bad at all it's the historical formation that is listed by nafzinger and i think that would look absolutely fantastic on the tabletop we've even had a little bit extra spend on something a little bit fun with those guys at ease but as i say if you want to keep it under 200 just go for plastic boxes you'll have 20 uh, well yeah you'll have 24 models left over but that's absolutely fine i'm sure you can use those as a combined french battalion or use them as something else for a future project that you've got going on you could even put them on the command bases with the uh, divisional commanders as well now that is the first approach that's the historically accurate version now i'm going to recommend a second alternative a middle way you could say I'm not going to suggest any more infantry. We've got seven battalions already, except the Guard Grenadiers, because they're absolutely awesome. So we're going to go for the three sets of Guard, and we're going to be spending, well, I say three sets, three sets plus command. So that we said before that the 36.75 euros is going to be about 30 quid. So the first 30 pounds from month two, we're going to spend on getting those Guard Grenadiers. Now we're going to add to this with a Napoleonic Saxon Divisional Commander from the Black Hussar miniatures as well. And he is sixteen euros fifty. That's quite a lot, but it is an absolutely gorgeous set. And for that, so that takes up to forty-five pounds. We've finished our infantry. We've got our brigade commanders already, and now General Lecoq has entered the battle. So that's that's very good. Now we need to hit up the third part of the Napoleonic trifecta, the horsey boys, and we need to get some cavalry gone in. Now I'm going to be a little bit of a sneaky monkey here, and I'm going to try and squeeze every penny that we can to try and get the most units. So what I'm going to recommend is a trip over to the Perrys, and a single box of their French heavy cavalry with an extra command frame. So that's B-17 French Napoleonic Carazier Command Sprue, 1812 to 15 single sprue. Now, this box and the extra sprue combined will take us to 20... Well, sorry, that'll be £26.50 for those two. So that takes us to £71.50 for the month. Now, because the Carazier box is one of the older ones... It actually has 14 minis in the box, meaning that with the addition of the two on the command sprue, an officer and a bugler, then we end up with 16. That's enough for two heavy cavalry regiments. Now, the Saxon Carasias were different to the French ones, but they're pretty close enough. I did a video quite a while ago on how to use them as, uh, how to use the French heavy cavalry as Saxons, but it basically comes down to using the heads provided for the carabineers and glue them uh, you know, just basically you build carabineers but instead of having the brass armor they've got steel armor now famously the guard corps didn't wear their uh, their armor at the battle of borodino and that means that everyone who makes them makes them without their body armor it's, it's a little bit annoying to me to be honest because most of the time they did wear their armor and in addition to the Saxon Guard Corps, there were two other Saxon Carazia regiments. Saxony is f is quite famous for its cavalry. Uh, it's weird because being being English, when I think of Saxons, I think of like Huskars and like dudes on foot fighting against cavalry. But actual Saxons from Saxony were very much known for their cavalry. And there were two Carazia regiments in the Saxon army: the Liebguard, not the Guard Corps, the Liebguard and the Zastro Carasias. So you can make basically two of those three units to go with your army. I would probably go with the Carasia units rather than the Guard de Corps, because in a later date, I would probably get the Guard de Corps from another manufacturer. We'll talk about those later in the video. But And also, I think if you've got two units that look the same, that are supposed to be the same, then that tracks a bit better for me than one that's supposed to be lifeguard, you know, um, not lifeguard, because they're the Karazis. One that's supposed to be guard de corps, or one that's just supposed to be a Karazia regiment. While we're over with the Perrys, we are also going to pick up another cannon to go with the first one to make our two-gun battery. Now, I don't know what cannon you get in the deal, if it even is a specific cannon or not. 
What I would suggest, though, is that you get one that matches that one. So for argument's sake, if you get a £6-pounder firing, then you might want to get a £6-pounder loading. Or if they do a £12-pounder loading, you might want to get a £12-pounder firing or you know whatever it is. I suspect it's probably going to be a £6-pounder. Either way, what you could do, and what I'm going to recommend here, is you go for uh, FN129 French Line Foot Artillery firing 5.5-inch howitzer. Because I think it's very unlikely that you're going to get a howitzer in that deal. And that is going to cost us £10. So that's a nice round £10. Taking us up to £81.50 for the month. Now we're going to look at those flags. As I mentioned, GMB does a really nice set. So I'm going to recommend uh, that we hit up SA-14. The Prince Friedrich August Regiment. Because... The uh, GMB designs don't do a specific flag for the von Steindl regiment. We'll pick up SA-11 von Recten, which, to be fair, at least it's the same colour. It may not be that accurate, but at the very least, it's the same colour. We're also going to want the Lieb Grenadier Guard flags and some for our cavalry, so a sheet of the Zastro Grenadiers, which will provide a, a flag for our second unit as well. Now, again, as I say, these aren't necessarily very cheap, and these ones uh, take us to £19.50, taking us to £101. Now, one thing that we don't need to get are bases for the cavalry, because they come with bases in the box. And there's enough spares that we can base those extra two guys we bought on the extra sprue. Now, as I say, we are over our £100 limit, £101, but as I mentioned before, remember last month, we had some money left over. So... I I I, <laughs> I actually worked this out. We could buy a dozen Freddos with the uh, the leftover. So there you go. You can get yourself a Freddo or, or or a dozen Freddos. You could be the talk of the club, just firing Freddos out. Or or you could be a bit more sensible with that. And <laughs> you could get yourself uh, th uh you could spend three pounds seventy five and get a pack of 60 mil round bases from war bases for your divisional commander, for General Le Coq. Now, he does come as like a little vignette, and they'll appreciate the extra room that you get from just using a 50 mil base. Honestly, they're absolutely lovely models, and that's, joking, Fredo's aside, that is the approach that I would go through. So this is the second option for the army, and to be honest, this is the one that I would go for. At the end of two months, we've got eight infantry battalions, which includes the guard. We've got two regiments of heavy cavalry and a two-gun battery of artillery, or perhaps even two one-gun batteries. Some really nice commanders, and everyone's got flags. They all look like it's an actual army, not some sort of medieval mob of peasants. So that, for me, would be the approach I would go for. However, hide your WMDs because... There is a third way, and that uh, that phrase might make Tony Blair appear. Deciding that we've got enough infantry from month one, we don't like to paint ground pounders anymore, then we are going to go all out on the cavalry. Now, as I said, it is great horse country. And let's look at their rundown of horsey boys. They've got two units of Karaziers and a unit of God Corps. We mentioned those. They also have reg a regiment of Hussars, a couple of regiments of Uhlans, and some Chevalier as well. Now, I'm going to suggest, shall we go down the heavy or the light path here? Now, I mentioned the heavies earlier on. I'm going to stick down the heavy path. And that's because when you collect the minor German states or you know, any sort of minor army, well, when I say minor, I'm talking of things like the Italians as well or the Neapolitans or even something like Poland, you don't tend to get much in the way of heavy cavalry. Poland does. But you don't get in much Karazia action. The Saxons absolutely do. But if you want to go for the lights, then that's fine. You can basically just swap out my suggestions for something else. So if I say buy 15 boxes of Karaziers, we'll just buy 15 boxes of Chasseurs. Effectively, I'm not going to say buy 15 boxes of Karaziers. But you know what I mean. Now, I am going to recommend a manufacturer here that I think is possibly a debutant for the channel. Maybe? I don't know. And that is Eureka Miniatures. It's certainly... Uh, I may not have recommended it on these Getting Started, but I have talked about it. Now, be warned. Be very warned. 
we thought we were splashing out before on the metal infantry and we thought we were splashing out on the metal uh, grenadier guards this absolutely is splashing out these guys are really really expensive now i was lucky enough to pick up two units of these for half price and even then i winced a little bit these guys are four pound 90 a model now they are Whoo-wee! They are expensive. So we're only going to go for one regiment of these metal Aussie boys. Eureka's an Australian company. And we are going to go with the Guard de Corps. If you're only going to have one unit, then you may as well make it the absolute pinnacle of Saxon cavalry. And as I said before, they're modeled here without their breastplates. Now, eight of these will set us back £39.60. That is... Uh, now, for the same price, we could get 28 plastic cavalry from the outpost, and we've got 8 from uh, <laughs> Rika, but there you go. Now, they are absolutely stunning. What I would recommend is you get uh, one each of the charging poses. They only do charging poses. One each of those. Uh, one each of the command, so bugler, officer, and standard bearer. And you also get the casualty model as well. You can have him sort of as if he's tumbling down during the charge. It means that you've got a really dynamic looking unit there and it also means that you've got no duplicates in your unit as well which is always nice so having splashed out on them we are going back to the perries and we're doing what we did in option two we're going for a box of karaziers plus the extra command and that gives it enough for the zastro karaziers and the lead guard we've also got the guard de corps as well now if you want to let history be your guide Brilliantly, you can do it without actually spending any more money, which is always nice. And that is, you could swap out the Liebgard Karaziers, so you've only got the Guard de Corps and the Zastro. And the second, well, I should say the third unit in that brigade, instead of painting the Liebgard Karaziers, you could paint them as the 14th Polish Karazier Regiment. Uh, because that was the brigade that they were in at Borodino. That's what I've done, that's what my Saxon uh, Heavy Cavalry Brigade is. We are now at £66.10 for the month. And we're going to stick with the cavalry theme. And we are going to head towards the lights. Stay away from the light. Not this time. We're going to head towards them. Now, by 1812, the Kingdom of Saxony had three regiments of chasseurs, one of Uhlans and one of Hussars. Now, we've got 3390 left, plus a little bonus from last month. So, I'm going to pass on the Hussars for now. And I'm going to go for a box of Perry plastic chasseurs with an extra command, Natch, uh, which would be a B67 French chasseur à cheval command sprue for an extra £4.50. Now, the uh, sprues, if you're not sure where they are on the website, because they're not very easy to find, you look on the tab for plastic sets, then accessories, then Napoleonics. It's, uh, it's a little bit like one of those... Uh, doctors hate this special trick adverts that's something that they don't necessarily advertise it particularly well but it is there whilst you're looking at those cheeky sprues i'm also going to recommend that we get one of their very latest sprues so they've probably only been out about a month and that's b84 napoleonic lance arms now this gives you six lancers which with the officer and the trumpeter we get from our extra command sprue Gives us a unit of eight Ulans. Now, this altogether will cost us £28.50, which takes us to a grand monthly total of £94.50, which with the £4.75 from month one gives us £10.15. Now, we with this, we can just go back to the Perrys and pick up a second cannon, similar to the, the second option, but we're actually going to need some bases for our... Guard decor. We may have enough in with the Perry's box of plastics, but we might not do so. We might need to have a think about uh, perhaps spending some money on that and heading over to war bases to grab a pack of 50 mil squares. You also don't have a brigade commander for the cavalry either. So that's something that we could use. We've basically got a tenner left over, so I'm going to leave it up to you. Again, in this second, uh, sorry, in this third option, we haven't got any flags either, so we'd also need to hit up GMB for some more Saxon flags. Now, in this uh, third option, we've got, let's see, we've got seven battalions of infantry, 
three regiments of heavy cavalry, two regiments of light cavalry, because we can also make chasseurs with the ones we don't give the lancers to, and we've got a one or two gun battery, depending on which way you go. We're a little short on horse command, as I said, but we could just use the Colonel of the Guard de Corps as the de facto brigade commander. Uh, we can measure from him. Or, and the same with the lights, we could just use the Colonel from there. It doesn't hugely matter with the lights because, of course, they've got Marauders. So it doesn't really matter. Now, alternatively, we could go slightly over budget and get an extra officer, perhaps uh, the Carazio one from Eureka, and use him as a brigade commander. As I said, we've got about £10 left over. So we could potentially use him, you know, five pounds of that goes on him, and then we've got ourselves a brigade commander. Of the three options, I think the second one is the only one that gives you a, a really nice looking full army with flags, etc. for under 200 pounds. The first and the third one are going to require a little bit more, not a huge amount more, maybe sort of 215, 220 pounds, maximum 250 pounds, and they'll get you... Um, some nice armies as well the third one perhaps a little cavalry heavy but if that's your jam then absolutely i think that's more than acceptable but that is it for today's video those are three different options for collecting napoleon's saxon troops now they are an absolutely fantastic looking army on the tabletop they've got some good rules in clash of eagles they're not they're not the best but they're they're up there with some of the better minor nations that are represented by repurposing the french kits we've managed to get quite a lot of bang for our buck and we've been able to use manufacturers that we we've seen all faithful the perrys but we've got some new ones in there we've managed to splurge a little bit on those extra fancy models the grenadiers and the guard de corps and all the guard de corps i suppose and yeah i think the saxons are a great looking army on the tabletop whichever of those three options you have chosen or you would be more likely to choose i should say what i can absolutely guarantee is you are going to need to learn how to paint white so enjoy that but that's it for today's video thank you very much for listening i hope you enjoyed it even if you're not interested in collecting the Saxons when we started this video, I hope you're thinking about them now. I certainly am. And if not, then you could always use this as a way of building an Imaginations army. So that's a, a nation that you've made up. Or you could even use it as the basis for a French army as well. But I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.